Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Five Go Bump in the Night by Enid Blyton, although it's actually by Bruno Vincent. Let's zoom in a bit more so we don't cut out the top of the old uh, green screen. There we go. So, um, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say all of them, almost all of my tabs are towards the start here. There's some cool illustrations in it. Uh, basically, this is like a, a, a famous five for adults book. So we get a, a howl drifted up from the nearby woodland and everyone shifted closer together. How about a ghost story, suggested George. Join Julian, George, Dick, Anne and Timmy the dog as they gather around the campfire and tell each other scary tales. Can they survive an encounter with the wolfman? What is the secret of the portrait Julian keeps hidden in the attic? And in Dorset, can people hear you scream? So there are, as you can tell from that, there are parodies of things like Dorian Gray and Alien, all that good stuff. Dane reads. I'll just like this little bit of uh, conversation here. So they're talking about uh, werewolves. You don't think it's true, do you, George? Anne asked, seeking reassurance from this bastion of staunch common sense. George hesitated. Oh, you can't, said Anne. It's so stupid. You might as well say Dracula exists and, and Dracula did exist, Julian pointed out. Vlad the Impaler. Whether he was a vampire or not, he was a real bloke. So what, said Dick. Michael J. Fox exists. Doesn't mean werewolves do. Uh, we have this illustration here, and this is a, a great little bit like characterization or capturing what, what bar people do, because it says, The barman, who seemed to have been dozing until they arrived, came alive and started assiduously picking things up and putting them down. And I think we've all been into bars where the barman suddenly tried to look busy when, some, when we've gone in and there's nobody else inside, you know? And uh, we just get this great line of dialogue. What the fuck? You've, you've shot me! And we great, get this great line. Uh, Johnny's is a term for condoms as well, so we get... I've never been in a graveyard at night, said Anne. Charming, isn't it, said Julian. Mind not for you, Johnny's. I know what these locals are like. And they meet a grave digger in the graveyard at night, and um, we get... What the bloody hell do you think you're doing here, bellowed the man. He put his meaty hands on the edge of the grave and hauled himself up, then stood there, brushing loose earth off himself. This accomplished, he turned his incredulous gaze upon the intruders. Well, he asked. We could just as well ask the same question of you, Julian said. The man squared up to Julian, he was six inches taller, and looked down at him. I'm doing my job, he said. I'm getting the graves dug as have to be dug. You might do it in daylight rather than scaring innocent people half to death, suggested Am. Have you tried to put a daughter through university on a grave digger's wage, he asked. Have you? No, I guess not. Weekdays I'm a landscape gardener. Weekends I work split shifts as the barman in the griffin down at the bay. Night times when the work comes along, I do this. Probably my favourite line in the whole thing here. Well, there's a few bits, so uh, first off, um, the grave digger takes his phone from his pocket and waved it. Audiobooks, innit? He said. I might be digging all night, but it doesn't mean I can't improve the old noggin. Last three months, I've been working my way through the Barchester Chronicles by Trollope. Pretty decent stuff. Hey, hands off my skull! Sorry, sorry, said Julian, who had just discovered a human skull beneath the bench and was playing with it. He handed it over. It's all right, said Jaspers. Only I keep my backy in there where my wife can't find it. He levered up the top of the skull and dug out his smoking paraphernalia. When he had finished rolling and lighting his cigarette, he held the skull up. I knew him, he said. His name was Morris. Alas, poor Morris, said Julian. Not really, said Jaspers. He were a right twat. That's my favourite line. And I like as well, just at the end of the picture of D Dorian Gray, um, the, the ending to this, basically they go up into the attic and look at the painting and they're like, oh wow, that's a, that's a really bad painting. And he's like, yeah, well, why did you think I hid it for everyone? What did you, do you think that there was something weird going on and it was giving me eternal life? It was just bad. I didn't want to embarrass the artist. So yeah, overall, Five Go Bump in the Night by Ina Blyton, a lot of fun. I do kind of wish I'd picked up Five Get on the Property Ladder just because of my own life circumstances, but I'll probably get to that one next. Um, but this was great, uh, like a little Halloween-y kind of read, I suppose, and also because it parodied a lot of like well-known classics and stuff like that. Um, there's stuff in there that you can spot and just enjoy the little nods to, you know? So there we have it, that's what I made of Five Go Bump in the Night by Enid Blight and slash Bruno Vincent. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.